Hey everyone, uh, let's talk about how can we fill our scene with uh, envelopes. So, um, in this scenario, we are primary, uh, primarily going to use uh, particles as our uh, uh, as our solution, uh, and uh, uh, there are a few things we should uh, kind of take into consideration. So. Uh, So the the envelope uh, being as a flat object, so when it uh, moves uh, moves forward uh, in the beginning and you know like it, it has some uh, direction, uh, it it moves kind of forward, but after losing some speed and uh, uh, being flat by its nature, it start kind of a uh, uh, start like spinning and uh, move differently so it start losing its speed uh, this way we can see the kind of a different type of behavior it also uh, depends on the whether it's a light object or uh, heavy geometry okay and uh, we and how can we also control this uh, uh, this uh, spinning um, attribute of the geometry okay and the last uh, is the the final destination the the uh, falling flat onto the floor since we're using particles uh, it's uh, uh, where, where where the particle is a simple point uh, we need to kind of uh, uh, also solve this uh, uh, solve this scenario so whenever uh, whenever particles uh, get closer to the ground, it will start uh, change its uh, orientation. So we could see it uh, falling flat on the ground. Okay, and also uh, there is a small tweak in the end. So um, we could see uh, those envelopes fall on top of each other okay and uh, and uh, the intersection is not that obvious okay so here is the final result let's start from the beginning The type of effect uh, we could see in the uh, like Harry Potter uh, movie whenever there's a lot of env envelopes uh, uh, would be flying uh, in the in the scene. Okay, so let's see how uh, can we actually uh, do this. So uh, starting from the simple. So here's my card. I've added some extrusion, some thickness and UVs and uh, um, I found some envelope texture uh, on the internet and and I've centered that so I could uh, have my pivot point uh, like on the end of, of the envelope okay so it starts from from here and uh, here I have uh, one point and I'm adding some uh, attributes like normal and up vector okay uh, next I'm just placing it so uh, so I, I since uh, this, this is the placement of my emitter okay and then uh, I'm adding some uh, velocities to 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 this point to the emitter, and also here I'm um, I'm adding an orientation attribute, orient attribute. Okay, that's simple. Uh, that direction. 
the reason I'm doing that uh, is that um, um, let's say so here's the let's see the final result so here I have my envelope and uh, um, if I turn this off Uh, the velocity is pushing the geometry and uh, it also affects the orientation uh, which I uh, which I don't want to have in the beginning so this way I would like to have this uh, speed variation apply to my uh, velocity channel but the orientation I'd like to keep it flat this way I have uh, the type of uh, movement of of the envelope okay so uh, yeah uh, next um, this is the grid which is the collision geometry um, uh, so so this is the basic uh, uh, a basic setup uh, of uh, uh, particle emitter okay and here I am uh, I'm, I'm choosing the all points okay and uh, the rest uh, of attributes is the same the only variation of uh, life of the particle I've changed it to 25 the rest is the same and uh, also here I've added gravity and also here I've added subsets of five, uh, which just which, uh, which simply gives you a lot more particles uh, in this amount of time. Okay, time rate, uh, time period that we have. For example, I do it one, we will have much less particles being emitted. So let's keep it five. So um, here, uh, the first thing I'm doing here um, is I'm uh, I'm affecting my uh, orientation. Uh, I would I, I would like to uh, to uh, to start um, changing my or orientation whenever. Uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, moves um, a little uh, in the beginning okay so I'm uh, kind of uh, um, forcing it to start uh, change it orientation uh, after some time and in this case I'm using this uh, time offset uh, I'm using the age and the life of the particle so after a certain amount of uh, uh, life of age or age of the particle, it start uh, start uh, change its orientation. Okay. So and here I'm using uh, the velocity, which is uh, which I've converted and uh, the original. Uh, orientation and the mix between by using the edge and the life of the particle this way I'm uh, uh, creating a, a blend between the original orientation and uh, uh, the, the next uh, orientation values okay so if I for example just turn this off let me just in this and let's see so um, as you see it has uh, a different effect uh, so if I turn this on we just turn everything off let's see 
So you see, I'm uh, I'm keeping here the the original orientation, and then I'm uh, uh, and then I'm changing my ori orientation values after some time. So I can I can try playing with it. Say, see how it goes see, like this so here you go flat and it's still and somewhere in here it starts like, changing our orientation so this way I'm kind of shortening this period and it will start Um, yeah, so I hope uh, you see the difference. And if I, for example, So um, you see the difference, I think it's kind of obvious. Okay, uh, the next one is the spinning itself, uh, that the spin speed we would like to apply onto the um, onto our particles. So uh, just to run through this again. So here I'm using the velocity and I'm converting that to the orientation and I'm mixing it with the original orientation and having my new orientation with the mix of uh, dividing the age uh, to, to uh, life of the particle and having that uh, gradient as a mixer. Okay, so and the next one is the pop spin, which is responsible for the spinning speed. And uh, so you see, we have here uh, our spinning um, envelopes in the beginning, but in, uh, so in 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 um, in. Um, in uh, in, uh, in sometimes, but in the beginning, uh, it has um, it's it's a flat value. There's no spinning at all. And next, we have our uh, envelopes spin. So here, I'm using an expression. Uh, the uh, so here, I'm having those basic values, and here, I'm giving uh, some big spin speed value which I'll use in the expression so um, here I have uh, uh, here I'm using the random ID attributes uh, which, uh, which I use in the expression fit01 which gives me like uh, the ID attribute from minus 1 to 1 uh, this uh, this float uh, a variable where I'm using this as the uh, as the uh, different direction of the particle in the negative or positive values. Okay, so for example, if I simply uh, sorry, if I simply turn this off. And I'm start playing. My uh, my envelope will keep uh, all those axes in a in a positive direction, as you see. Like they they somewhat uh, looking this way. And if I turn this on, I 
now we see them uh, flying uh, or spinning in a different direction. Okay, the next one I'm using, uh, I'm creating a ramp a variable where I use the age and the life of the particle, particle with some minimum and maximum values. Okay, and I'm using this ramp to uh, multiply my uh, spin speed onto my ramp, which I have here. And I'm also um, having this uh, multiplier uh, just to uh, uh, the multiply the, the force that we uh, the spin force that we've created the, this ramp value okay and some random IDs just to um, just to have some variation okay of spinning value so as you see this uh, gives a very nice result of our particle uh, spinning if I for example increase this multiplier and you see, so I'm applying a, a bigger force value. Let's say I add a little more. And with this ramp, I can control my uh, sp spinning period where, where it should start. Okay, so here we, ha here we have let me just um, so here we have our flat um, envelopes and then later they start spinning just okay Uh, so this is a minimum and maximum value. So uh, I should start with minimum. So in this case, I'd like, I like I want it to be zero, very something, very very low, and then at some time it will start start spin. Okay. So this way you can control uh, where you'd like to uh, your uh, envelope start spinning. I simply return it back to where it was. I think it was good values. Okay, let's keep it like that. And, um, and next, uh, we are doing some collisions. So uh, here I'm um, choosing the second context geometry we was we, which was the grid that we have um, attached to the uh, to the particle system okay so as you see we have collision and i choose behavior uh, a slide and i'm also um, creating a group of uh, uh, collided particles okay so so as you see our particles sliding and uh, and yes about it and then I'm uh, I'm using this track value and I'm choosing the uh, this uh, this collided group to stop my particles from uh, sliding too much okay so as you see, so again, here I'm using the ramp variable that I've created with the minimum and maximum values. And here I have a ramp that I am using as a multiplier and also a multiplier just to force my ramp to act a little faster. Okay, and I'm using the air resist, air resist that we have here. And um, I'm multiplying uh, the, the the base value to my uh, ramp variable, 
uh, multiplier and some random ID uh, values okay so as you see after some times uh, particles just stop okay and the last thing uh, that uh, is important is just to have our, our envelopes uh, uh, stay flat on the ground okay so so um so here um where i'm using so again here i'm creating an uh, orient attribute and i'm creating a mix be between uh, the base orientation that we have here so what we would like we would like to use the age of a particle okay which we're using here and i'm having this ramp uh, which is a, a mixer so uh, so whenever uh, particles uh, comes at certain point it will start change its orientation uh, blend smoothly so it would look uh, very natural okay as you see like it just falls flat and um, the original one and uh, the newly created one um, Uh, here I'm using the I have the up uh, vector attribute and um, I'm using this make transform which I'm uh, attaching to my uh, rotation uh, actually uh, all right all right um so um this thing is uh, just to be clear so here i'm using the the point number and i'm applying it to a random node where i fit this and I'm having like uh, 180 degrees uh, and here I'm uh, applying this to this uh, attaching this to a rotate node where I have this uh, up vector uh, that I'm using as the as an axis okay and I'm applying some random uh, values just to uh, rotate each of the particle okay so, so that's why you see if I use the the original one it just uh, simply looks in one in one direction but this way by using the random uh, values I'm creating this uh, uh, random rotation uh, of each each individual uh, individual particles and this way uh, I'm having this um, uh, random distribution and as I said I'm using the the age uh, ramp as a mixer and here I have the new orientation okay so this way I'm having um, turn this off Um, this way we can get uh, this type of uh, um, result uh, which I think looks uh, very cool and also as you see you, you can have uh, a, a nice set of controls that uh, you can change the behavior of your particles and also the speed 
which is very important. Well, uh, I hope you liked the lesson, uh, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, goodbye and good luck. Thank you.